There's been a lot of interesting signings this free agency period, and the 49ers have definitely had their share of them. But maybe one of the most interesting ones is the fact that they went out and got Jason Barrett. Barrett's an interesting guy. I mean, one healthy, he's clearly a very talented player. However, that one healthy is key in that sentence. I mean, he's had definitely his fair share of injuries and then some, and it really is unfortunate because he is such a talented player when he's on the field. He does a lot of things really well, and honestly, I could spend a lot of time talking about what he does well, but instead, I'm just going to jump into showing you what he does well. And take this play, for example. That's where he is on a screen, and there's nothing too fancy going on right now. It's pretty standard man coverage, and the route he's going up against is a pretty standard go route. And so typically on a play like this, you want to make sure that you don't get beat deep down the field. And if you take a look, Verrett is actually very far down the field, so the chance of him getting beat seem to be slim. However, this is actually going to be a very good route ran. If you take a look, Verrett does have to turn his shoulders, as the route has been going on for long enough that he has to make sure his shoulders are turned, because otherwise he can't just backpedal 50 yards, that's not going to go over too well. But it's also worth mentioning that take a look at where that receiver is in comparison of Verrett. He's further down to the bottom of the screen, which typically would mean that he's going to try to get open to that bottom half of the screen. However, what he's actually going to do is then move up a little bit to the top half of the screen. And because he's going to do that, and Verrett turned his shoulders to the opposite side of the field, this now means that it could result in a receiver getting wide open. However, look at how quickly he turns his shoulders again and gets in position to still make sure he's playing good coverage. Just about instantly, and at this point, there's basically no chance of a pass getting complete to him. That was a good play, and really, on those deep passes, he does very well. It's very hard to complete something deep past him. And that's a key trait to have in a cornerback. I mean, when you have all these new quarterbacks who are throwing the ball deep and making these 50-yard bombs look easy, it really is a huge asset if you have a corner who doesn't get beat deep too often. Although one reason for that is he does have a tendency to stay a little bit off past the receiver, which typically can result in some plays not working out too well. Like on this play, for example, the Chargers are going to be running a cover one hole, and that's the man that Verrett is in charge of covering. Now, because of this route, this isn't going to end up affecting anything, but I'm not talking about what actually happened. I'm talking about what could have happened, and the reality is, if it was like a slant route, for example, this could have resulted in an easy five or six yards, and then potentially more if the receiver was able to run well after the catch. You could say, well, maybe he was ready to break in as soon as he saw a slant route and try to make a play if there was a slant route in the area. And it should be mentioned that he is on the quarterback side of the screen to the receiver. He isn't lined up along with that receiver. He is much farther away from the sideline than the receiver is. So if there was a slant route, he would have been in a slightly better position to try to make a play. However, there definitely could have been some yards gained on a slant route. But the counter argument is he trusts himself to break in and potentially break up the ball or just make a tackle. And because of that positioning, it guarantees that he won't get beat deep downfield. So there's an argument to be made. But that's just my opinion. That's just something I noticed, and I figured I should share my opinion on it. Maybe you guys disagree and think that he's playing in perfect coverage. I definitely think there's an argument to be made to either side. But I do want to show negatives and positives, even if, in my opinion, the negative can still be argued a positive, and I think it's probably a nitpick if it is a negative. But the reason I wanted to bring it up is because look at this play, for example. Playing far back can definitely have its disadvantages. If you notice this play, it is going to be an RPO, meaning the receivers have to run out their routes as if it is a standard play, meaning that the defensive backs have to guard their routes as if it could be a standard play because it could be a passing play. So what the Jaguars are going to do is run a pick play, where they have a receiver run out to block that defensive back right there, and then they have another receiver just cut in. And also, worth noting, look at how far back Verrett is. Because of this, this is not going to mean that a receiver is going to get very easily open. The quarterback didn't know that at the time, and it ends up still being a run, but the fact of the matter is, this is a play that Verrett could have gotten beat on. However, I'm not showing this play to try to hammer and point home that Verrett is doing a terrible job by staying deep. I'm not showing that at all. I'm actually showing this play because I wanted to show a positive from Verrett, and you'll see what I mean with this next play. If you take a look, this is from that exact same game, and right now the positioning is quite similar. Verrett's now on the outside, but look at how much closer he is than he was on that last play. This would be a much tougher thing to guard if you were playing farther deep. But Verrett learned from that last play, oh, okay, the Jaguars do this a lot, so I need to play closer in, and that's exactly what he did. Now when he has to switch, he can do that seamlessly and play great coverage and very tight coverage. Because of this extended time, Bortles then can't throw it there, tries to force it somewhere else, and ends up throwing an interception. One other thing I noticed about Verrett is he is so great at stopping deep passes, even from press coverage, like this play, for example. If you take a look, he is playing press coverage, and it is man coverage, and there is a receiver running that route, which would seemingly be a great route to try to beat press coverage. But one thing Verrett does very well, that's very Richard Sherman-like, is the way he creates contact and slows receivers down. Now, obviously, you can't just push a receiver. That's illegal, and that would be a penalty. You can't just go around pushing guys. But what he's going to do is just put a hand on that receiver. This way, the receiver can't really run in that direction, and you're kind of controlling where he goes. And then, of course, you can push off a little bit, and the refs won't notice. I mean, let's be honest. In a perfect world, the refs would catch everything, but in actuality, the refs miss most things. So if you get a hand on it and maybe push off a little bit, the refs aren't going to call that. And in my opinion, they shouldn't call that, as that would be ticky-tacky, and that would be kind of a weak thing to do. 
unless it's something major, the rest would almost never call this, and honestly, it's even debatable as to whether it should be a penalty or not, with the light amount of force that Verrett pushed, but that allows things to be much easier for him to keep pace with that receiver, and even though that receiver does get a little bit past him, he doesn't get anywhere near as past him as he would want to, to try to get open and try to be in a situation where you'd actually want to throw it there, because Verrett could then easily make a play if the pass isn't perfect. He does that a lot, and here's him doing a very similar thing, this time from the top of the screen. He is a step past the line of scrimmage, but only just a step. He's still very close, and once again, it is going to be a pretty deep route that would be great against press coverage, as that's the route that the receiver is going to be running. So once again, what Verrett is going to do is put his left hand on that receiver's right shoulder pad. He's not going to push him, he's not going to knock him down, he's just putting it there, so that way if that receiver does then cut back, now he knows very quickly, it's a little bit similar to like a pick in basketball where if a guy sets a pick then you can't run there and you have to go around where if a defensive back puts his hand on that receiver's shoulder pad then you can't really run in the direction of where that defensive back is because if you do then the defensive back can just push off and you can't blame the defensive back because you're running into him and then if you have a cut to the outside or just run a deep route then the defensive back can easily keep pace with you and when you're as fast as Verrett is and as good at keeping pace with guys as Verrett is he's able to stay back and make sure he continues his good coverage so now I've mentioned a few things I mentioned that Verrett I do like when he plays a little bit closer up I think he's better from that position, largely because he creates contact in a very smart way and is very fast so he can keep up with those deep routes. But one other thing I really like about him is how he can be effective in plays like this. If you take a look, it's a cover one linebacker blitz, and that's the route that he's going to be going up against. This isn't anything too fancy, right? It is a pretty good route to try to get open, however, as long as you just stay past your intended target, then you can either knock the ball out of the way, or at the very least make a tackle for a minimal game. It's a relatively easy route to stop, especially if you're a great corner like Ferret. These are the kind of things he loves to play against, because it is the kind of thing that isn't too hard to stop. And if you take a look right now, he's actually doing a very good job of staying very close with that receiver, so really, this seems like an easy win for the charge. However, there's one problem, and this isn't actually a standard flat route. The receiver is actually going to then cut downfield and try to get open past Verrett. This now turns into a foot race, which is still not the worst thing for Verrett, but it's anyone's game at this point. However, take a look at what he does. Once again, he's going to create contact, which is smart. He gets his hand on that receiver's right shoulder pad, which now means that if he tries to cut back in or tries to cut in any direction, Verrett is now going to be very aware of where he's trying to cut. At this point, if he gets beat, it's only going to be because he loses the foot race, and that's not something that's going to happen to him very often. Not only that, but he actually shows great ball awareness in this situation by being able to turn his head, see where the ball is, and knocking it away, and that's very tough to do. I mean, when you're running full speed, the time it takes to move your head can be everything. If you misjudge that time and do it too early, it can allow a receiver to get wide open past you. But again, it makes things easier when you have your hand on that receiver's shoulder, because then you can look up and still know where the receiver is. The only problem there really is with this is that you could see, especially now with this new instant replay rule, you could definitely see guys baiting him into some pass interferences, but as a whole, it really is a smart thing for him to do. But I also showed that play to show his ball awareness. That's another thing I really like about Verrett, is he does a great job of turning his head and seeing where the ball is. It's kind of one of those things that's hard to really teach, but you definitely know when a guy has it, and Verrett definitely has it. Like on this play, for example, it's going to be a cover one hole, and that's going to be the route that Alshon Jeffrey is going to be running. This is actually a great route to run against the cover one, because it's a deep route, and there's only one safety back who has to make sure he's in the middle of the field, meaning that if you can get deep enough, it could allow for a touchdown if you win your one-on-one -on -one matchup. So if you notice, Verrett does a very good job of staying with Jeffrey the entire way. He doesn't get beat by Jeffrey, and he's in great position to try to make a play. How However, now he's going to have to try to turn his head around. It's a lot easier said than done, especially when you're going up against a big receiver like Jeffrey. But he is able to turn his head around, leap up, and get his hand on the ball to knock it away. I mean, that's just a great play right there. I mean, that's the kind of play that you say, okay, let's give this guy a shot even though he has injury history. Because guys who can make plays like that are really total game changers. Here's another good example of him being very aware of where the ball potentially could go. As you see... Once again, he's playing press coverage, and this time what the receiver is going to do is try to cut around him. So again, Verrett is going to create contact here. He's not going to let that receiver get open, and the second the receiver cuts, he's going to be in position to try to make a play. So of course, it should be mentioned that anything in football can and will be used against you. So what do you do against this type of coverage? Well, one thing you can do is cut back in to where the defensive back is. That seems counterintuitive, because typically you want to cut away from the defensive back. But if you are putting a hand on a receiver, it means you also can't be running in that same direction. And when you cut in, you could end up cutting to that defensive back's back, which could allow you to get more open. So that's what's going to happen here, and it's actually going to work as it allows the receiver to get open. However, the throw isn't a great one, and Verrett sees this, intercepts the ball, and takes it all the way back for a touchdown. So you might be saying, so what, right? I mean, clearly he just got beat, but it was a bad throw, and he was able to take advantage of that situation. And yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, that's what makes this play so great, is that he got beat, but instead of just getting beat, he was still able to look around, realize where the ball is, and make a great play out of a bad situation. I don't care who you are. I don't care if you're Deion Sanders. You're going to get beat from time to time. But ball awareness is something that can always help you. Again, it's hard to really quantify it. You can't have a stat that's how good of a ball awareness type of guy are you. But as a corner, it really is simple. 
You look over, you see the ball, you make a play on the ball. That's your job. The more you look over, the better off you're going to be, and Verrett does a great job of looking over constantly. It's not like he has out of this world awareness or has eyes in the back of his head. He just constantly checks back to see where the quarterback is. You know, they say, see the ball, make a play on the ball. Well, the first part of that is to see the ball, and you can't see the ball if you're never looking at the quarterback. If you're going to look back constantly, you have to have faith in your abilities, and you have to have good abilities, and Jason Ferret absolutely does, and when he does look back, it typically works out well for the team he plays for. Like on this play, once again, he's playing press coverage here, and that's the route he's going up against, and once again, it's a great route to beat press coverage as the deep route downfield. So typically, this is a good situation for the Chiefs, right? Well, yes, it's a good situation, and so that's why the quarterback is going to throw the ball there. However, it's not a great throw, but Verrett is able to look back and see that it's going to be nowhere near where typically you'd want this throw to be, and still be able to run over and make an interception on it. Constantly looking up for the ball is a huge thing in a cornerback. If you can always look up and see where the ball is, you can often make plays on the ball, and Verrett certainly does that, and that's one of the reasons why he could be a huge addition to the San Francisco 49ers team. I know he's had a ton of injuries in the past, but let's be real, he's only 27, and guys get back from injuries way more now than they ever have. I mean, 20 years ago, there's no way J.J. Watt would be able to have a 16-sack season after missing two full seasons. The way trainers are now, I mean, guys can come back from such brutal injuries, and I fully expect that Jason Verrett could be potentially come back and I really hope he does because he was such a great player for the Chargers and while they say you don't build teams through free agency I mean just looking at it on paper they've now added Richard Sherman, Quan Alexander, Jason Verrett, and D Ford all through free agency and if they can just fill out those other spots through the draft and they already have some spots filled up i.e. Fred Warner this could be a very good defense and the fact of the matter is if they have a very good defense and Jimmy Garoppolo on the other side of the ball it could be a very good thing for the 49ers. Thanks for watching my video on Jason Verrett typically my 49ers videos do very well so kind of fingers cross this one will do well as well and also just so you guys know i actually recently started both an instagram and a twitter i'm posting on that pretty frequently so so feel free to send a tweet my way i have no life so i'll probably respond and we can easily keep the conversation going on there